Welcome everyone and thanks for joining me. My name is Graham Herbst. I'm community forester with the Nebraska Forest Service and today we're going to discuss evergreen tree selection for the Great Plains. First we'll discuss a few factors on your site that should be taken into consideration when picking a conifer or an evergreen for your landscape. These include our temperature extremes, the wind conditions, moisture and humidity, pollution, and the limitations on space that you may have in your site. Extremes and temperature have always been a factor in Nebraska. As we can see from this hardiness zone map from 1990, the state was more or less split in half between zone 4 and 5, 4 being to the north and a little bit colder on average. As we can see with this new updated map for 2011, almost the entire state of Nebraska is now zone 5, which has a lot of people calling in to find out whether or not they can plant uh, trees that were originally more considered more southerly. In fact, we still want to stick to the trees that we have tried and true in the state and not get too exotic with what we're trying because these hardiness zones are based on uh, averages over multiple years and any given winter we can still have as severe a winter as we have in the past and so you're really rolling the dice with plant material that's zone 5 or warmer. For guaranteed success, stick with a, a tree or shrub that is at least a hardiness zone, if not two, higher than what we have here. So for, the, for Nebraska, where we're in zone 5, a zone 4 or 3 plant will definitely be successful in your area, if it's given all the other things that it needs to thrive. One of the ways that these adverse weather conditions can affect our evergreens in Nebraska is what we refer to as winter burn. And this is a combination of lack of soil cover and insulation for the soil and high winter winds that can pull moisture out of the needles of evergreens. See conifers, they still need moisture throughout the whole winter to keep those needles alive even though we consider them dormant. So a good watering in the fall, right before you put your hoses away, is always a good idea for any evergreens that you have in your landscape, especially those that are newly planted or still getting established. As a general rule, evergreens and conifers don't need nearly as much water as our deciduous trees typically do. So they're great choices for your acreage where you may have a more dry situation. On the other hand, a heavily irrigated turf situation is much less than ideal for most conifers and they will not thrive in these sort of scenarios. Concolor fir, or white fir as we see here, is definitely not appreciating all the moisture and it's one of those trees that's definitely sensitive to having what we call wet feet. So having these trees planted a little higher having mulch around the base of them that keeps the turf away is going to minimize that competition with the turf and have an area that doesn't need to be as heavily irrigated. Another cause of damage and stress in conifers is problems with salt and other pollution which is another one that we typically see more in an urban setting than the acreage but it's not exclusive to the city. De-icing salts can easily accumulate in the soil over years as they are applied to the street and then plowed off the street into the adjacent curbway. As these build up in the soil, they're going to make it difficult for the trees to get moisture out of the ground, which gets back to the winter burn problems that we discussed a little bit ago. So anywhere that's going to be subject to these de-icing salts or heavy um, automobile pollution are definitely not good sites for most evergreens. Since evergreens typically have a slower growth habit than deciduous trees and shrubs, they're also commonly put in places that they're much too large for when they reach maturity. The globe spruces that we see on either side of the entry to the front door were probably the size of a watermelon when they were originally planted. But as they get larger, uh, they don't lend themselves to mechanical shearing like other shrubs might, which make them just a poor choice for this situation. When site considerations are less than ideal for an evergreen that we plant here, then that stress compounds and makes it more difficult for the tree to fight off other insect and disease problems that may be in the area. The first pests that we'll discuss are bagworms, which can easily explode in population and get out of hand before you've really noticed them, but on small trees they're easily removed by hand to prevent further spread from one year to the next. 
This pest also typically occurs on plants that are undergoing heat stress oftentimes. Parking lot situations where conifers are maybe not getting too wet, but they're definitely being stressed by the heat that's, that's reflected off of concrete and buildings. Bagworms, if given the opportunity, will feast on your spruce trees, your uh, arborvitaes and junipers and cedars, but they can go after deciduous trees as well when they're in leaf during the growing season. And they're typically actively feeding in the uh, late May, early June, late June time period. Scale are another group of insects that are tricky to control with contact insecticides because of the narrow window when they're in a crawler stage and not protected by their hard or soft shell. Pictured here are two of our most common scale insects on conifers. In the left and center pictures we have spruce bud scale, which obviously gets its name from how similar the insect looks to the buds of the tree itself, which can make it difficult to uh, identify. On the right we have pine needle scale, which stands out much more, especially when the populations get higher, with the white color of the shells that are left behind by adults. There are a number of insects that bore into conifers and feed on the live tissue underneath the bark. And here in Nebraska, one of our most important is the Zimmerman pine moth. ZPM damage can typically be found where the branches attach to the trunk. They prefer this entrance hole, and what you see accumulate outside of that hole are milky yellow pitch masses that almost have sort of a popcorn shape as the tree uses these fluids to try to push the insect back out ineffectually. Tip blights are fungal diseases that spread in the springtime when moisture and humidity is abundant and cool conditions prevail. As the needles are infected by blights, they typically brown out and fall off after a season or two, which gives most plants affected by blights an open and less full appearance. Pine wilt is a disease that has been here for a little while, devastating our scotch pines as well as a few others that are susceptible to it. It's characterized by rapid decline of a tree over the course of a few months and whole branches typically dying back at a time. Here we see three separate pictures of the same tree dying of pine wilt. Each picture is two months apart showing a four month span which characterizes the rapid decline that we see in pine wilt. When you know a tree has pine wilt or suspect that it does, quickly removing that tree from the site and either Burying, burning, or chipping that wood is paramount to minimize the possibility of pine wilt spreading to your other scotch pine or other pines on the property. Now that we've discussed the type of conditions to avoid for conifers and the problems that can result from those stresses, let's discuss some species that, that should be considered for eastern Nebraska. As we discussed earlier, fir trees are not very tolerant of wet soils but otherwise have very few insect and disease problems and are tolerant of open conditions that we see in a lot of the Great Plains. Spruce as well typically don't want to be on wet soils, but once we get past our bagworms and some of the scale insects, uh, we don't have a lot in the way of problems with these trees either. For smaller alternatives to the larger conifers that we have, look to some of the junipers and arborvitae that we have available to us and realize that some of these need a little bit of protection from the winter at times. Arborvitae especially typically don't have a strong central leader and are composed of multiple vertical stems that often need to be tied together in the winter to prevent snow load from spreading them open. Because pine wilt is so strongly associated with scotch pine specifically, although it's a beautiful pine tree in all other respects, it's not one that I recommend planting in Nebraska. For trees that are maybe a little more unique but need a more protected environment, you could consider eastern hemlock and Douglas fir. If you have an area where you can keep them a little bit more out of the winter winds, they may do fine in eastern Nebraska. This is a big topic, but I hope I gave you some information to help make some informed decisions about conifers for Nebraska. If you want further information, we have a number of great state resources available to you. The Nebraska Statewide Arboretum, the Nebraska Nursery and Landscape Association, the Extension Office, and the Forest Service, of course, are all available to answer your further questions about choosing conifers for Nebraska and good places for them to go. Thanks for your time.